let's go back to uh, the sunitinib versus pazopinib. Since the Compars and Pisces data came out, um, there's data about dose individualization of sunitinib. So giving sunitinib in a different way, uh, not necessarily the 50 milligrams four weeks on and two weeks off. So for example, uh, Dr. Bajornison and his group uh, uh, looked at uh, not dose reducing right away, uh, but actually waiting for some sort of gr uh, less than grade two toxicity. So having some sort of toxicity could potentially be an indicator for a proper dose, a proper dose being an indicator for having enough drug in your system, causing enough efficacy, a better PFS overall survival and response rate. And so uh, he's uh, done schedules of 50 milligrams, two weeks on, one week off and they show really good uh, response rates and progression-free survivals uh, in a single arm setting. I know MD Anderson has done a, sim uh, has done a study of schedule changes. Nizar, did you want to talk about that? Yes, I think uh, I was going to mention this at the, at the previous exchange. The, uh, most people now who use sunitinib, still use sunitinib as first-line therapy for patients with clear cell arsacy, use the alternative scheduling of two weeks on, one week off, instead of the st uh, standard four weeks on, two weeks off. And this uh, is the result of several retrospective studies, including the one uh, by uh, your colleague, Dr. Bergensen from uh, SUNY in Canada. Uh, we published our series of 180 uh, patients or so uh, a couple of years ago and uh, came to the realization that the toxicity is less when we use the two weeks on, one week off, and efficacy is maintained, or in fact maybe uh, was uh, uh, improved over the four weeks, two weeks. Because patients, uh, if you use the two weeks on, one week off, you do not have to interrupt as often, and you do not have to reduce the dose of sunitinib from 50 down to 37 and a half or 25. So patients can continue on therapy. But I think, you know, there is now prospective data, and the prospective data, uh, there was a recently published paper from Korea looking at the two schedules uh, in a small randomized phase two trial, where the two weeks on, one week off were certainly associated with fewer adverse events compared to the four weeks on, two weeks off, uh, and the efficacy was numerically better for the two weeks on, one week off schedule, although it did not, uh, it was not significant, again, because of the small number of patients. We are conducting a multi, uh, institutional study, single arm study with sunitinib on the alternative schedule, the two weeks on, one week off, uh, with Cleveland and uh, Fox Chase, UNC and Stanford, where we are uh, uh, evaluating a 60 patient phase two trial with the alternative schedule. So I think, yes, it is attractive. Now there is a new way uh, of uh, prescribing sunitinib, which is the two weeks on, one week off schedule. Although, you know, not with uh, any uh, comparison with pazopinib, I still feel, feel that pazopinib is uh, more tolerable when, when uh, you know, even if you use the two weeks on one week off schedule of sunitinib. That's my, yeah. my but, experience. But the 37 and a half was also tested against the 50 mix, four weeks on, two weeks off, presented by Bob Motor. And although it's uh, maybe better tolerable, uh, the, the outcome is uh, inferior. It's not a huge difference. So we don't use the 37 and mm -hmm. a half continuous. So I think that it's, it's, it's a bit difficult to use um, other drugs uh, regimens that have not been tested in, in, the, in the formal large pivotal phase three trial. Sure, yeah, and so there will be no phase three trial to look yeah. at a new schedule of, of mm -hmm. sinitinib. But as I said, the only prospective randomized trial is the Korean study looking at right. the two schedules, yeah. and that showed uh, you know, uh, improved toxicity or safety or tolerability for the 2-1 schedule, mm -hmm. and the efficacy was clearly uh, numerically uh, better, although statistically not. So we, we I agree with you. We do know that <coughs> TKR pharmacodynamics is different in different ethnic subgroup. Mm -hmm. sure. so, sure. so it's difficult to extrapolate. Sure, sure, sure. I think what I do do for sunitinib, though, is I do start with 50 milligrams, four weeks on, two weeks off, and then quickly reduce, down, uh, quickly reduce to 50 milligrams, two weeks on, one week off. So technically, it's not really a reduction before going to 37 and a half yeah. milligrams to try to optimize that efficacy. Well, but the, challenge, the, the challenge on this dose issue, I think that is extremely important. If you look back and from the conceptual point of view, in my opinion, we have not uh, developed these agents looking at the ideal dose uh, uh, for most patients, mm -hmm. okay? We know if we look at TKIs in general, not only in kidney cancer, but in all diseases where we are using them, 
uh, those has not been addressed in clinical trials uh, as appropriately as uh, we yeah. should, okay? And uh, the challenge of your colleague presenting this data is not necessarily the adjustment uh, uh, for toxicity bringing down the dose or changing the schedule. The challenge is increasing the dose in some patients, okay, to 62 and to mm. 70 milligrams, mm. so 75 milligrams. Uh, and some papers, uh, patients actually do tolerate that kind of dose. And there is some evidence, and that's the challenge that I think we should uh, try to address in future trials, that uh, the dose needs to be adjusted to the pharmacogenetics or pharmacogenomics of the single patient. And we have not been developing drugs as paying attention at the metabolic aspects of the patients. Mm -hmm. We have in the same arena some evidence that in some situations, toxicity development that may probably relate to those uh, may have an impact also on efficacy or relation to efficacy. So I think that uh, uh, with the speed of putting a drug into the market, sometimes we lag behind mm. in generating information that is important in how to select the patient according to how they do tolerate and metabolize certain drugs. I, I think agree. the let's, main... Let's, let's move on. Exitinib is where I was going to say just uh, the drug that has been studied in a, in a uh, more, uh, more uh, scientific way exactly what you're talking about, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, uh, targeting uh, adverse event as a potential biomarker oh, of response correct. is the uh, excitinib drug. And Brian Rini led this way That's here right. yeah. and published it in uh, last oncology last year in, with the AGIL trial. Uh, yeah, that's very good discussion. So uh, I think the dosing needs to be uh, adjusted uh, in a lot of our targeted therapies. Let's talk about subgroups.